I'm sure you will agree with me that we are living in troubled times. Ever since we Americans split the atom, the whole world has been split. Disturbances not only here in your own country, but all over the world. As one of your poets put it, the good lack all conviction, while the worst are filled with passionate intensity. How are we going to live in these troubled times? There's really only one answer. We have to become saints. Now when we hear that word saints, we generally think of canonized saints and almost the impossible. Now some saints indeed did give us impossible things to do. We can't be like Simon Stylites and live in a column, the top of a column for 20 years and have food brought up to us. We can't be like St. Bernard who had 12 steps to perfect humility. I'm sure that just as soon as you reached the 12th step of humility, you were very proud that you were humble. And nor can we go through all of those palaces that St. Teresa the Great recommended. So here we have the dilemma that we have to become saints to be happy, and yet how be one? Well, the Church has given us a saint for our times, and that is the picture of this young nun, St. Therese, who gave us a way, first of all, that's very simple. Once in a conversation with Pope John, he said to me, you know, I always try to avoid the complicated things of life. I want everything to be simple. And St. Therese wanted everyone, everything to be simple. So she really had two rules. One was never to seek the satisfaction of the self. And secondly, to do everything, to bear everything, out of love for our Lord. Now each and every one of you, for example, have a certain station in life. It may be on a farm, it may be in a sickbed, it may be in an office, it may be in a home. It makes no difference how humble the work is. The method of the little flower was to integrate sanctity with what we were doing. So that there's really no one form of life that is higher than another. Uh, for example, you may think that just simply because I appear before the public so often and talk about holy things, that therefore I must be more holy than any of you. Now that is not true. There may be some old lady behind a pillar here who does not understand some big word that I use but is a thousand times closer to the good Lord than I am. Simply because she followed this rule of relating every single detail of life to our blessed Lord. She integrated her life to our Lord. Now that's just exactly, for example, like pouring a drop of of water into wine, the two become whole, or it's like dipping an iron into fire. The iron becomes fused. And so St. Teresa recommended that we take any action, study, work, rest, leisure, makes no difference which, and relate it to our blessed Lord. Now let me give you an example out of her life. 
One of the nuns in the convent was old sister Peter. She was in the 80s. She was arthritic. She was cross. Nuns can be cross. So can priests be cross. God forbid. But Sister Peter was a cross. And she was in great pain. And she always had to go to the refectory about ten minutes before the other sisters because it took her so long to walk on account of her arthritis. Then she had to be aided as she walked. Had to sit down in a chair in a special way and had to have the bread broken for her in the bowl always in a special way. For she'd done it that way for 50 years. Well, every other sister found it very hard to take care of Sister Peter. And St. Teresa said, well, I'm going to do this. One day, said, Sister Peter said to her, you're too young. You're a young novice. You don't know how to do anything. I think maybe you want to kill me, the way you're treating me. And St. Therese would just smile back at her. And one day, while she was going into the refectory with Sister Peter, she heard music. And there came before her eyes a great ballroom. Sweet music was being played, dancing was on the floor, and a small talk that went with that kind of entertainment. For the moment she said she was transported to the gaiety of this scene. Then she looked down at Sister Peter and she said, for all the joy and gayful music of the world, I would never give up Sister Peter. And then Sister Peter began to love her. And of course she always loved Sister Peter. Now think of how many circumstances we are have in life. Well, we have to take care of Peter, people perhaps who are like Sister Peter. And she made herself a saint just simply by taking care of someone who was a little cross. Sickness detaches us from the world. And secondly, we are to see that in every sickness there is a chance to offer our sufferings up in union with our blessed Lord. After all, I think the hand of Christ is in the glove of every sick person. And all that we ever see is the glove. But inside is the hand of Christ who gave us that suffering. So coming back now to the point, I say to live in these troubled days, we have to become saints. And a saint is one who makes Christ lovable. That's the definition of a saint. I have a friend who spent 14 years in the communist prison, undergoing all kinds of torture. And when he got out of prison, he saw a little boy in the street and he said to him, do you believe in Jesus Christ? The little boy said, no, I don't. Well, why don't you? Well, he said to my friend, you believe that Christ is God, don't you? Yes. Well, said the little boy, God can do many things. God made elephants. And big elephants made little elephants. God made roses. Big roses made little roses. God made monkeys. Big monkeys made little monkeys. And I think, that if Jesus is God, he ought to be able to make other Jesuses. And I've never seen another Jesus. My father is an alcoholic. My mother takes in washing. 
She has no time for me. Nobody's ever done a good thing to me in my life. So I don't believe that Jesus is God because I've never met another Jesus. Now maybe this is what we're all supposed to be. And what the little flower intended that we should be. Little Jesuses undergoing our passions, spreading goodwill and kindness, just as he did. And never think that you're too old. Remember, St. Teresa died at 24. Just think of it. When many of our young people today have hardly reached the state of maturity, she was already a saint. And so since my time is limited now, and I have only a one more minute with you, I'm going to talk about the little flower for the next three days on other occasions. But I just want to give you the simple lesson from this one minute that is left. And it is this. It does not require much time to make a saint's. It requires only much love. Bad luck.